I'm Justin McRoberts, and you are listening to the Title Pending Audio Series, a collection of readings focused on moments in my own creative history that I hope shed an inspired light on yours. Chapter 13. A few thoughts on the use of cliché. Cliché is anything that has become commonplace by overuse, and it is an enemy of good art. The consistent use of cliché tells people that you either don't know enough or maybe you don't care enough about your topic to communicate with more imaginative and energetic language. I am continually inspired by the depth and power of Amy Mann's lyrics. Her songs, along with songs by writers like Josh Ritter and Tom Waits, have rung out in my soul for years because they give shape to thoughts, feelings, and concepts that had previously been shapeless. Because they wrote thoughtful and intentional words, new things were formed in me. Things to do with grief, healing, anger, peace. Because of their lyrical craftsmanship, old things have been revived in me. Things to do with friendship, and trust, and courage. I want my work to do that for others. While art certainly doesn't have to be useful to have value, one of the great values of art is that it provides a unique clarity and connection between a person and his or her own life. The use of cliché makes that clarity and connection less probable, if not, at times, impossible. In large part because the use of the same old words in the same old arrangement conjures up the same old feelings, thoughts, and images. And while there's certainly nothing wrong with nostalgia, good art stirs up far more than fond memories in the human heart. For the longest time, my friends and I would trek up and back down the mountain using the same trails over and over again, Mitchell Canyon to Mitchell Rock to Eagle Peak and back down. Those are the trails that comprised our first long hike together, and we loved making our way along them. But as comfortable as we were with that sequence of trails, our experience of the mountain would have been impoverished had that been the only trail or sequence of trails we took forever after. So it is with the use of cliché. A familiar phrase might do the trick and make your point, but I would suggest that its over-familiarity and its overuse steal something from an otherwise rich opportunity. Why simply say something when you can say something in a way that helps someone see and hear a compelling, vital truth in their own lives or in their world? Using cliche is easy. The work you put into finding new phrases, words, and images is actually worth putting in. Your audience is worth it as well. Theologian Walter Brueggemann's book, Hopeful Imagination, is a poetically charged call to abandon dead words or cliché. In this essay, he writes, Predictable language is a measure of a deadened relationship in which address is reduced to slogan. The use of cliché can be reflective of a tragic disconnect between an artist and her subject. What may have been a living relationship at one time is reduced to a cold and mechanical transaction of words and phrases. I am a living creature, creating art about living things. My work ought to feel alive. Life consistently challenges cliché. Life surprises me and keeps me guessing. I want my work to do the same. I suspect that we lose vitality, Brueggemann continues, when our own language of God is domesticated and our relationship with God in our world is made narrow and predictable. My personal experience of love, God, and war, the three things most of us write about, has been vital, unpredictable, varied, and I want my art to reflect this. The use of cliché funnels my complex human experience of life into formulaic, predictable, and small spaces where it suffocates and eventually dies. Good art gives life because it is, in some way, alive. My friend Tom bought his wife Anne a half-decaf light chocolate mocha several times a week for a year. Anne loved the drink, but what made Tom's offering worth making was that the coffee shop wasn't on the route home from his office, and he went out of his way to get the drink for her. After a year, Anne told her husband he didn't have to get her that drink anymore. In fact, she said, he probably shouldn't. Why? Not only because the same drink a few days a week for a year might get a touch old, but more importantly to her, the gesture just didn't mean what it used to. So go out of the way for your audience. Do the work it takes to avoid cliche. Make art that invites people 
into as fresh and vital an experience with their world as the kind of experience that inspired you to make your art in the first place. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Title Pending Audio Series. If you've enjoyed listening and you'd like to take another step or two in the direction of your own creative process, navigate your way to yourcreativeprocess.info. And there you'll find an online course I've designed for you.